Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on weather. In this update, we've got a huge storm coming as confidence is increasing on a significant rain event in areas that are have seen the drought will see a flood in the coming days. Welcome back everyone, Powell Ponder on weather here with your Saturday morning update. How's it going? If you are new to the channel and you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America and the tropics, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to the satellite picture uh, this morning. And a couple features that actually stand out here in the tropics is basically nothing, right? It's been incredibly quiet. I mean, look at this. I mean, there's hardly any tropical waves out here in the open waters of the Atlantic. So it remains quiet, but closer to home, we do have this little feature that's getting organized in the Bay of Campeche. So the National Hurricane Center went out there yesterday, has a 70% chance of this developing in the next day or two as it continues to move northwest, heading towards Mexico and back into Texas. We've actually got the remnants of 98L here that dumped all the heavier rain in South Texas a couple of days ago. That is dumping some significant rainfall into portions of the Four Corners region, especially into Arizona. But that actually traverses and gets wrapped up into this frontal boundary right here. So you've got all these players really coming together to send Texas in a significant flooding threat over the next week. So we got a lot of healthy rains on the way. So let's take a look at the overall a you know severe weather forecast for today and there's really not much i mean as far as like severe weather we could be looking at some marginal risk storms into portions of you know say central missouri getting into parts of illinois into indiana and ohio you know some of these could be on the gustier wind variety talking about 60 mile per hour wind potential and you can't roll out some you know pocket change hail and you know maybe some isolated quarter size hail reports in this areas but you know, overall, it's definitely not too much to be concerned about. You know, as we go into your, you know, Sunday time frame, that instability just shifts off a little bit off to the east. Now we're talking to places back into eastern Kentucky with some gustier winds heading into Ohio again, as well as portions of West Virginia and then into uh, western parts of Pennsylvania and upstate New York. And that's where the severe threat be, will be. And then where all the heavier rains will be, will be shifting out of the Four Corners regions, headed into New Mexico, and eventually headed into Texas and parts of Oklahoma on Sunday, heading into Monday, with a very significant flood threat setting up as all these areas. You've got, you know, 99L coming from the south. You've got the rhythms of 98L. You have a low pressure center off here. Then you have that cold front dropping from the south. All that's going to commingle together. Upper level winds go light. And you just have a conveyor belt of moisture just inundating over the same areas for an extended period of time. You know, dumping some very heavy rainfall, if not significant. And at times, it would likely be described as intense rainfall, the kind that you really can't see across the street, right? It's a bona fide frog stink strangler going to be happening into the state of Texas for this upcoming week. But this always extends into the deep south as well. So even if you live into the southeast, you're not going to be out of the question of, uh, you know, some heavier rainfall because you're going to be within that zone, just maybe not as intense and some of those areas as you head towards Arkansas, Louisiana, but that will just extend into portions of the Carolinas and head up the East Coast too, because they desperately need the rain up there too along the East Coast. So yeah, heading into Monday, I think Sunday night's gonna be your significant rainmaker. And then heading into Monday, that's gonna be where we're gonna be probably seeing some flood watches unfold, you know, in these areas. So you have that slight risk for excessive rainfall. So this is a, a compounding effect over several days and the ground is really dry. So it, you got to kind of treat it like the desert in this type of atmosphere. So, hey, you know, doesn't really take much to actually cause flash flooding because it's going to be that ground is super hard. Trust me, it's very hard. A lot of cracks in the ground out there. And uh, so it's just now unfolding. So we could be looking at, you know, some serious flooding taking shape, unfortunately, uh, in the state of Texas. So they need the rain, but it's, it's gonna be coming a lot. <laughs> they definitely need to be coming a lot. Those lakes are definitely gonna be filled up. 
that will shift off into portions from North Texas, more into Central Texas, Eastern Texas as we get into Tuesday. But it's gonna, like I mentioned, it's gonna be a compounding effect over time because the main concern is, it's the upper level winds, right? I mean, it's a fact you've got, you know, high pressure to the north, you've got low pressure to the south, and then you just got the conveyor belt of moisture coming across. There's not much to move it, right? You see the little bars, not much to move these further south. So they tend to kind of reform and they go over the same areas, same areas, same areas over an extended period of time. So that's why we could be looking at you know, significant flooding in parts of the areas heading into portions of Oklahoma, but really North Texas, Central Texas, East Texas, parts of South Texas, Arkansas, and parts of Louisiana. That is kind of your bullseye for the upcoming week. And then a little bit lighter amounts as you head towards the Tennessee Valley up into the Southeast. And a lot of this instability is gonna be off the coast, off the East Coast, the heaviest rainfall unfortunately will be out in the open waters, but you still could be seeing some uh, marginal, you know, heavier heavier storm activity, you know, along, along the coastal area. So now let's just kind of break this down because it really doesn't end on Tuesday, it just extends into Wednesday. So we're talking, you know, this is just Wednesday alone, right? So the graph on the left-hand corner of your screen, you can add another two to four inches of rainfall right there in central Texas, Waco, Austin, San Antonio, those areas are gonna be seeing heavier rainfall by then. Still one to two inch amounts widespread from the Dallas to the Red River to the East Texas down here to Houston area, back into Louisiana. A lighter amounts, half inch totals in the Southeast. And again, there's that heavier rainfall right off the coastal areas. But then it just, again, it doesn't end on Thursday. It's still there, right? We still got multiple inches of rain just adding up over time back into central Texas again, where these areas guess, definitely need it. I mean, you know, Austin Austin had 51 days in a row. Dallas recently just broke their streak of 67 days in a row without rain. So these areas literally go from nothing to widespread significant flood threat, <laughs> right? And so that is definitely what's on the table and you get sporadic amounts heading into uh, Florida. And again on Friday, right? It winds down somewhat, but still you're adding to these half inch, quarter inch, one inch totals in North Texas. Most of the heavier rain will sneak down into South Texas, getting back into San Antonio area, Houston Metroplex, Louisiana, back into say Baton Rouge, into New Orleans areas, into Mobile, back into Florida you know lighter amounts up the east coast into the tennessee valley we still could be looking at some lighter amounts by then by into iowa and going to wisconsin and portions of illinois again the monsoon kind of winds down so i mean it's going to be pretty active for the next couple of days but then it definitely winds down towards the end of the week but overall it's going to be a compounding effect like i mentioned and this is more the one of the more conservative type models, believe it or not, where you're looking at five to eight inches widespread heavy rainfall for a good chunk of North Texas, Central Texas, and East Texas. Good chunk of Texas. A lot of this area did look to be Oklahoma. We're gonna was gonna get a little bit bigger, but it's definitely confining more to extreme South Oklahoma and especially Texas. It's definitely gonna be impacted, inundated pretty heavy from this event parts of Arkansas, parts of Louisiana, that is the bullseye for the next uh, seven days, but still along the coast here, again, the heaviest mounts are gonna be offshore in the open waters of the Atlantic, but still some, some decent amounts along the coast here, about one to two inches. But definitely what's concerning is, like I mentioned, that's the most conservative model. And then the most bullish model is technically, in my view, the best model, which is the European model. And it's been showing this for about four to five consecutive runs now. So this is definitely concerning that they're very bullish on rain amounts. I mean, this pockets, these pockets have moved around, but they're still showing, you know, 10 to 20 inches of rain in some isolated spot. So it definitely has the capability. I'm looking at upper levels. I'm looking at fat fat values, your your water content values upwards to three inches, if not more than that, three and a half inches at times, right? You've got a lot of heat built up in that atmosphere, right? It's been hundreds for days and days and days. Now all of a sudden you have lift in the atmosphere and you got some sort of trigger in the mechanism. Well, storms like heat, right? And it's just a 
conveyor belt of moisture. So, hey, this can't rule it out. This is why we're definitely concerned and saying, hey, you know, some of those totals of five to eight could easily creep up to 15 or 20. And we could be looking at a significant, if not extreme type flood event in some of these areas. So definitely be on concern. The lakes are, we got, you know, the, the ground is very, very dry. So if it comes fast and fast and furious, it's not gonna have time to soak in, right? I mean, so that's why it could, you know, it could be a dangerous setup. So, you know, definitely be on high alert uh, if you live in those areas. But overall, let's take a look at temperatures, right? So, uh, you know, a lot of people travel, truck drivers. I wanna know, hey, where are some of the cooler spots? Where are some of the warmer spots? We're in August. It's just all about where the rain and clouds are gonna be and where the sun is gonna be. That's pretty much simple, right? So if you've got rain in areas, if you've got clouds in areas, it's the cooler spots, right? So you got rain and clouds into the four corners with the monsoonal flow, rain and clouds over Texas and Oklahoma and a good chunk of the Southeast, right? Where you don't have the rain and clouds, you got predominantly more sun, that's where we're gonna be the above average temperatures. And that's where we're gonna be seeing the ridge take place a lot of sinking air in these areas so you've got this you know above average temperatures for much of the west much of the northwest much of the northern states all up here in canada and then all up here along the east coast predominantly and then everything underneath is going to be below average and as far as winds well there's technically not really that much severe weather to talk about that showed you some marginal storms but other than that it's just all about the heavy and the significant rainfall and then areas where you don't see the rain you're seeing a lot of sun uh, for the most part again it, you're not really the wind is really not that big of a concern uh for the week to come and then beyond that it's kind of extends kind of the same thing right i mean i don't think the ridge goes anywhere in the pacific northwest i think you kind of remain drier for the most part i think you're going to be staying above average for the last week of august uh, same deal for the Ohio Valley, same deal for the Northeast, predominantly above average temperatures, where you're going to be seeing the below average temperatures, or again, where I think you're going to be having continued cloudiness, continued, you know, rain, raininess in these areas, and that's where you're going to be seeing the below average temperatures, and the same thing as far as the precipitation front, there's the precipitation, all those areas in green are going to be seeing slight, if not moderate areas, this is not this week, this is next week right so this is the last week of august so this is a compounding effect so it could be raining at least in parts or at least have rain chances for you know 10 out of the next 10 out of the next 14 days right so it, a dramatic turnaround from what you have seen um a, as of late but yeah there's the temperatures again you know even the last week of august above average northwest above average north above, above average east clouds and rain cover below average temperatures for parts of the south so and then there's the heavier rains as you go into uh the the last week of august as it will continue not just in the next week but beyond that it continues all the way through essentially the end of august going into the first couple of days of september so let's take a look at the tropics i told you it's pretty quiet out there it, it, we, you know, we're kind of expecting things to ramp up, but it doesn't look like it's going to be this week. We have Danielle, right? We have that little system that's not Danielle yet, but it does have a 70% chance of developing. So if even if it does develop, it's going to be maybe a quick development than head inland. So it's got about 36 hours, right? It's, it's, it really doesn't have that much more time uh, before it heads uh, inland. But other than that, what's behind it is technically not much of anything until the last week of August where we're starting to see more of these tropical waves trying to show, at least on the ensemble member guidance, trying to show more tropical type development or more spin in the atmosphere. And they do have it of a potential development cyclone by then. But even if again, if it does develop, is way out into the Atlantic. We got plenty of time to track this system heading it by then it would head into the first week of september so hey uh, i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video and definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update why i protect you before and after the story